wanted man, Rich. A vineyard. Yep. Your favourite. Perfect time of the day. Look at that light hitting the vines, Karen. I love the vines when they're full of green leaves and grapes. It's such a beautiful time to visit. Absolutely. Right, we have arrived. Oh, hello. Hello, welcome. Hi, I'm Karen. Hi, Karen. Eliza. Richard. Richard, nice to meet you. What a day we've got. It's beautiful, isn't it? Welcome to Wanted Man and welcome to Heathcote. It's beautiful. Yeah. Magnificent. Thank you. Couldn't we've have been... picked a better day. Absolutely. Shall we take a yeah, walk and I'll show you around? Yeah, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> So Eliza, what are we walking amongst here? So these are our Shiraz grapes. We also have Marsan, Roussan, Viognier, a bit of Grenache. Well, our timing's pretty good. It's just before vintage. It is. It's really busy, but it's a really fun time at the vineyard as well because it's sort of when you see a year's long work mm. come to fruition. Um, we often bring the kids down to pick the grapes, which is a great fun day. So it's a real family-focused vineyard. It mm. is. It is. It's a labour of love. Um, Dad bought the vineyard in 2005, and really it was a passion of his. Um, and over the years, the family have started to get involved. We do a lot by hand, so we're all, if you're taking a wander around, we're all mm. hand picking. And even onto the wine making, we have minimal intervention. And that's how it really started. Dad bought it as a labour of love. It was always going to be that way. And he planted what he wanted to drink. He absolutely <laughs> planted. And we get as through a would. lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to using your wine in the cooking today and also having a little bit of a sample, maybe. Me too. And maybe you can come back for a taste. I'd <laughs> love to, and I hope you love it. Rich, I'm going to make a pasta, a spaghetti, in fact, with some mushrooms. Yep. But I've already got a head start on the recipe, Rich. As she would. Well, I wanted to intensify the flavour of the mushrooms, so I've got eight field mushrooms here. I've chopped them up and I threw them into the barbecue for around 25 minutes mm -hmm. and just started to cook those mushrooms, so they're full of flavour. The base flavour for this pasta, though, is garlic and some chilli. I will need some fresh herbs, actually. Okay, now look, I did do a running jump and run to Richie's and grab you some. Now, look, I just got past the tarragon, which I hope will work. Ah, tarragon, be brilliant yeah. in it. And I'll also be grabbing two red chilies. I think it's important when you're going to make a pasta like this, get a little bit of prep done before you throw the pasta in the water to not put too much pressure on yourself. Because the um, Barilla gluten-free spaghetti will only take around six minutes to cook one. Yeah. Okay. Rich, that's the garlic chili done. Yep. Now I'll throw the pasta in the water because I'm ready to cook. The pasta water should be boiling and we'll just throw this back in. Okay. What are your thoughts on people who add oil to the pasta water? No, nah, it's a waste of good oil. It's a waste of good oil. <laughs> I agree. Let's put our large, wide base fry pan on. Mm -hmm. Extra virgin oil. Probably about 100 mils or 80 mils. Now, it seems like a lot, but that is the secret to a great sauce in this mm. style, OK? Exactly. Rich, I'm going to throw the garlic and chilli in. Yep and get cooking. Now. If you could chop over the nuts first, right. actually. I want some toasted walnuts. Rich, I'm going to add a good pinch of salt yep. and pepper to this pan. Now, you still want a good amount of texture in those nuts, no, don't you? No, chop over them quite. I want them oh. to be almost like a mealy... Oh, I'll be here all day. The garlic and chilli needs to fry for a couple of minutes. It should be really fragrant and just turning slightly golden. You know what? Even I'm surprised by the amount of oil you're putting there. I would not have put that much oil in there. Rich, this yeah. oil becomes the sauce yeah. for the pasta. So in next, the mushrooms. Rich, the mushrooms are starting to give over their flavour into the oil. We'll yep. also have a splash of the masan viognier now, okay. please. Bring them out. So, that's probably about 150 mils. Yep. The idea of making a pasta sauce like this is you're trying to emulsify everything together. So you've got the chilli, the garlic, the extra virgin oil, the mushrooms and their juices. Yep. And the white wine all simmering down there. Looking good. Rich, we're going to let the wine reduce a little bit and then yep. add a splash of no lactose cream. Can you pick off some parsley for yep. me and just tear it up and maybe a few sprigs of the tarragon? Shall do. This is not a cream-based pasta by any means. It's just enough cream to give the sauce a little bit of a lift. Rich, the pasta's ready. Yep. I'm going to lift it straight from the pot. 
and into the pan. So I do find when I cook pasta that I will generally, if I don't put it straight in from the pot like Karen's doing, that if I, when I drain it, I'll keep a little bit of the water just to moisten the pasta. Now that is known as Italian stock sometimes. <laughs> okay, in with the herbs. Yep. Now the herbs will just add that burst of freshness that a dish like this needs. And then we literally just toss it through. Rich, just before serving, we're gonna add some of those walnuts. So give me a lovely handful. Want some more? And I'll just, no, we'll put it over the top as well. Okay. In true Italian style, you're literally pouring it out. A few mushrooms. I do love serving pasta up when it's all on one plate and yeah. everyone gets to sort and of you just, it's help convivial. yourself. Yeah. Look at that. Maybe a few more walnuts and a little bit of pecorino cheese. It's a sheep's milk cheese yeah. and it's low lactose. Now, Rich, I'd be delighted if Eliza could come and sample this pasta. Hi. This is Hi, the masterpiece. It looks amazing. It looks so delicious. I was going to say, you could probably smell it from all around here. I really could. Mm -hmm. I really so we've could. got some roasted mushrooms, some chilli and garlic, and of course, the Massan Viognier. Buon appetito. It's my spaghetti with mushrooms, chilli and garlic, and toasted walnuts. That is absolutely <laughs> so delicious. The garlic and those toasty walnuts. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad and you like it. the mushroom flavour is seriously infused through the whole thing. Mm. It's really delicious. we simmered it in your beautiful masan viognia. <laughs> and the mushrooms just really gave over all their flavour. Oh, they really yeah. have. That's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. I reckon we should grab this one and go off and wander and oh. have a glass amongst the vines, okay. Karen. What do you Let's reckon? Let's go. Why not? I'm with you. OK, let's go. <laughs> apple is my favourite apple to use in this particular recipe I'm doing with pork. So we're lucky enough to have two growers here from Modi with me today, Shane and Chris. How are you doing? I'm Karen. Hi Karen. Lovely How to meet you? you both. Shane, this apple has quite a catchy name. Where did Modi come from? It comes from the famous Italian painter called Modiani. So I'm guessing that there's some connection with the red of the apple? Yeah, in his paintings he used red clay as a base. Mm. We heard about this fantastic apple and a group of us in 2011 made a trip to Italy, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. But we also saw this apple, which we fell in love with, and we brought it back to Australia. And whereabouts do they grow, Chris? Uh, they're grown in the Golden Valley. Um, we have the perfect mix of sun, soil and water to grow really tasty Ooh, apples. Yeah. And uh, they're available in supermarkets throughout Australia. Cooking with them, I really love the way they hold their shape but also the generous sweetness the Modi apple does give us. I'm doing a delicious dish with St Bernard's pork with a Modi spiced apple chutney. So out of the way, guys. Maybe send some other, the other fellas back in Thank for you. a taste later. <laughs> to start the roasted chutney off, grab yourself six Modi apples, slice them in half and roughly dice them and throw them into a large baking tray. And I'm leaving the skin on because I love the colour and also... All the goodness of the apple is just under the skin. Well, Rich isn't here at the moment. Maybe he's got roped into vintage. Working hard wherever he is, I'm sure. I wonder what Karen's doing. So into a large roasting tray with the apples. It looks like quite a lot at the moment, but you will lose around 30% of the volume there. I'm going to add a couple of pinches of salt. Some garlic, a couple of smashed cloves. Just splitting the skins off and chopping over quite roughly. In on the apples, along with some ginger and also some turmeric. Julienne about five centimetres of ginger and throw it in on the apples and garlic. And then Grate in around a three centimetre piece of turmeric. Now this adds a burst of flavour and great colour. Along with the turmeric, I've got some red onion. Peeled and just sliced each half into about six or eight pieces. And I'm not cutting it super fine because I don't want it to disappear. I want it to be texturally visible in this chutney. Then literally just add the onion in. 
Now to spice the mix up, a couple of pieces of cassia bark, which has the flavour of cinnamon. So nestle them in. Two star anise. Star anise is an intensely flavoured spice, so a little goes a long way. Now, although Modi apples are quite sweet, I am going to sweeten this a little further with around two tablespoons of coconut sugar. A dash of coconut oil. Now, you could use a few knobs of butter at this stage, but the coconut oil adds a lot of flavour as well. Next in with some red wine vinegar. Generous splash of that, at least 100 mils. Now this needs to cook for around 20 to 30 minutes in an oven, or I preheated the barbecue. This side of the barbecue is on and this side is off. So I'm treating this lidded barbecue like an oven. In it goes. The chutney will need 25 to 30 minutes to cook. We'll get straight onto the pork chops. I've got a delicious rack of pork here. St Bernard's free range pork. I'm gonna cut two big pork chops off the end. Obviously, you can get your butcher to do this. Now, because we're cooking on the barbecue, it is a very hard task to actually achieve some crackling. So I am going to cut this skin off and put it away in the freezer for when I am doing roast pork later on. And you literally just run your knife along the rind of the pork to remove it, just like that. The other little trick I'm going to do is just Cut into the fat so these chops render a little bit of the fat off while they're cooking. It also gives a great little pattern to the pork chop when it's finished cooking. Next, onto a tray, season the pork chops up with salt, pepper, and I've also got some five spice just to follow through the theme of the roasted apple chutney. Five spice is one of those spices that's really intense, so you only need a couple of pinches. Okay, chops are ready. So will that chutney be. Oh yeah. So you can see that the volume's reduced quite a bit. We give it a little bit of a stir, and all the flavors have intensified. And the modi apple is still holding its shape. The onions have softened beautifully. And that is going to be magic with my St Bernard's pork chop. So I've got my barbecue now on a medium heat. We'll drop the pork chops on and they'll cook for around five minutes on one side and about three on the other and a couple of minutes resting. definitely cooked. They just need a little rest before we cut into them and have a sample. Now I'm pretty sure I've got some Modi growers here. Joe and Rocky, come on in. Have hey, I got Karen. a treat for you? Aaron. Hey. So we've Looks got good. some we have beautiful nice. cooking with Modi. St Bernard's pork. Mm -hmm. And then the hero as well Absolutely. is this is the modi apple that I've turned into a roasted spiced chutney. Looks great. It smells um, good. It's almost like a bit oh, of a beautiful. salad, if you like. And I've put in some ginger and we've got Gee, the, turmeric the in there. Held up. The texture of the apple's held up well, hasn't the it? The texture of the apple is incredible. Like that has had a slow roast for 30 yes. minutes. And you can see the blush in the skin there. It's quite beautiful. Right. Yeah, lovely. Dig in. Thanks, Karen. This looks really nice. Yes, definitely grab some of that apple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, really nice, some really nice spicy flavours in that apple as well. Really nice. Love just compliment. everything combined together just blends into each other so nice. It's mm. just, yeah, it's really nice. Beautiful. It's very different to a traditional chutney, but I think it works very well with pork and showcases the modi yeah. apple beautifully. Yes, thank well you, Karen. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you. I'll give you the recipe. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much for coming in and sampling my barbecued pork chop with spiced modi apple chutney. Now that we've done all the tasting, I've forgotten all about Richard. I wonder what he's up to again. Oh, yes, very nice. <laughs>
<laughs> a kiss. Very good. Should we find out what Karen's doing? What do you reckon? Hey? Yes. You are beautiful. I'll say you said hello. Yes. <laughs> Growing up, Karen, as a family, we used to enjoy going out and having a lot of Chinese mm. food. But, you know, as you get older, and I realised with my food intolerances that it's a bit of a minefield with all the hidden ingredients, mm. but I miss all those flavour combinations. Fair so I've come too. up with this fantastic recipe. It's a roast rump cap with Asian eggplant and mushrooms. Sounds delicious, Rich. OK, so we've got a wonderful piece of bass straight beef here. What is the best way to do this? Well, this is actually the rump. So everyone would be familiar with rump steak. But this is the rump steak in the whole piece, and it is fabulous to slow roast. Yep. So let's get that happening. All right. Salt. So a piece like this, after searing, take about 30 minutes. OK, here we go. Okay. So I've got a baking tray on, Rich. Yep. Just going to drop the rump cap in. Going to sizzle and render the fat a little bit, flip it over, yep. sear the other side, and then pop it on this side for the barbecue. Drop the lid, set and forget for around 40 minutes. Okay. Rich says brown enough, I think. Look at that. Oh, perfect, Karen. Lovely. These two burners are off. These two are on. The heat will circulate like an oven. Drop the lid. We've got some time up our <laughs> sleeve, around what 35, you got in mind? 40 minutes. <laughs> Well, I think. Grab those glasses, Rich. Yep. Bottle of the Shiraz. We'll have a little wander. What do you Let's reckon? Go. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Rich, I think this Shiraz is going to drink so well with your dish today. <laughs> that was a great idea. <laughs> oh, you know. Nice to pass the time. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's have a little look-see. We're at the 35-minute mark. Oh. So we'll set this aside and give it some time to rest. OK, I'm going to do my wonderful eggplant and Asian mushrooms just to surprise you. So it's got a little bit of onion, um, some garlic, and a little bit of ginger. If you want to peel that while I chop these. So I'm going to smash this out with a little bit of salt in the back, like so. So this is going to give us the flavour at the background of these Asian mushrooms. I'm going to put in my garlic, my onion. So really rich, building flavour into the mushrooms. Yep. So this is going to have all those Asian elements in there. It's going to have a little bit of oyster sauce. It's going to have a little bit of light soy sauce. Mm. OK, lovely chop there, Karen. Karen, now I've actually quartered chopped and steamed the eggplant. And when you steam eggplant like mm. that, Rich, you get a really um, luscious, pearly flesh mm. that takes on the flavour of whatever you add it to. Exactly. It's a great way of cooking eggplant, skin and all. OK, there we go. OK, so let's add some baby king browns. These are really cute, quite meaty. Mmm, they've got great texture. Yeah, you can see these are just starting to soften, so I'm going to add some oyster mushrooms. The great thing about using these Asian-inspired mushrooms, you're getting a lot of textures and flavours, and it is so pretty mm. to look at. Yeah, look at that. A little bit of Chinese cooking wine. Instantly just wilts the mushrooms, softens the eggplant. Yeah, looking great. Next in with some oyster sauce. About two tablespoons. About two tablespoons. And some light soy sauce, again, about two tablespoons. Again, gluten-free. Wonderful anoki mushrooms. Break them up and get them in there. Some of those last minute would be good on the dish too, I yep. think, Rich. And lucky last, just a little bit of sweetness in the background of this dish. A little bit of maple syrup. Quite often that little flavour you can't quite put your finger on in a Chinese sauce like this mm. is a teaspoon or so of pasta sugar. Oh. So that's the sweetness. And that's that about it. About. We're done. So the mushrooms are done? Mushrooms are done, the rump is rested. Can I help you? Absolutely. Can you carve? Yes. Okay. Put that one there for us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Okay, so we're carving yeah. this way. Are you of the opinion the person who carves gets the choice bit? Is it? Do you want a sample, Rich? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, called do. the chef's tidbit. Yeah, that I know. It just has to be done. Mm. Mmm. Perfect. Oh, 
grass-fed bass straight roasted rump cap. Delicious. That. that is perfectly cooked. So we've got our beautiful bass straight roast rump. And I'm going to finish, I'm going to crown the dish with our wonderful Asian eggplant and mushrooms. Delicious, Rich. Because that's sort of sweet and a little bit mellow, I'd love a little bit of pickled onion. So a little, little just... I mean, nestle that in nestle there. Nestle that in there. And then if you've got some little anokis at home that are uncooked, they look kind of pretty. That does look pretty. Scattered over. OK, and to finish it off, just a little bit of fresh coriander. OK, we've got our barbecued beef rump with Asian eggplant and mushrooms. Looking fantastic. Mm, it smells divine. Oh, I'm so happy this worked out. Mm. That is everything I miss about Chinese food. It's got those sweet elements. It's got a little bit of sour in there. It's got the soft texture of the eggplant, the mushrooms, the beautiful bastrate beef. What a splendid way to finish our mm. day here at Wanted Man in Heathcote. I love it, Rich. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Rich. <laughs>